and welcome to the channel. It's Adam with ND72. So today we're back with the E55. So as you saw in the previous video, we kind of did that whole opening box with the new throttle body, the snout, and all the other gaskets. Today we're actually going to be installing them. We also are going to be adding in some 550 injectors that I got from a member online. So we're going to throw those on there. And also I got the adapter harnesses from VRP for that. And that's just going to give me a little bit more fuel because I think I have a ejector issue already. Just because one whole bank is going, ever since I went to the track class, it's going really rich. So we're going to see if I got a stuck injector in this video. Change out all eight of them with a series of good injectors, new O-rings, new boatload of supercharger gaskets. We're probably going to add more oil, or I mean change the oil. We're going to be doing a lot to the car today, just getting it up and running and see how much fun it is. Let's get to it. So like I showed you earlier, we got the ported billet, whatever you want to call it, VRP, 92 millimeter snout. We got the Hellcat 92 millimeter throttle body. We got a series of bolts and hardware that came with it. We have a new map sensor. We got a series of new gaskets. We got the adapter harness that's just plug and play. Gaskets, gaskets, gaskets. 550 injectors with O-rings and adapter harness. All this stuff came from either Mercedes Direct V or VRP and FCP Euro and then some people from the forums. I'll put all the links down below where I got most of it and try to remember all the part numbers. But I'm super happy. Let's start knocking it out. So we got the car pulled in. It's pretty cold right now. So I'm going to first start taking off my surge tanks, which these are pretty easy and straightforward. We're going to start pulling these out and I want to pull the injectors because before we go too far, I just want to test it and see if I have a leaking injector. So to start taking the surge tanks off, it's pretty straightforward. Just get yourself a T30. And then you got bolts that go from here, 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 here. And then you got the wide pipe in the back. Uh, it might be different for other people. Mine should be a seven mil. So I'm gonna put on my ratchet and my gun and start whizzing them off. This should do the trick. Ah, just kidding. Always do this stuff by hand. You should never really be using a big impact on any of this motor stuff, unless you have maybe a crank bolt that stuff. But I'm gonna be throwing this back in the toolbox and start doing everything by hand. So I got the surge shakes off. Here's the old gaskets. They look a little beat up. That's why we did get new ones, but we're going to save these just in case you need a set. Like if I ever do need an extra spare, so we might put these to the side. Also, so I got the surge tanks out. As you can see how I like to do it, because these bolts are different sizes. Just as you pull them out, just kind of pull them out as a unit with the bolts and lay them to the side. Um, so inside my surge tanks, not that bad. Ooh, I don't want to lose my hardware. Um, but I do start smelling fuel. So we most likely got a stuck injector, and we're going to try to get to the bottom of that right now. So normally I would crack over here and start getting rid of the fuel, but I want to see if I kind of have a leaking injector and I want to just physically see it. So I'm going to start taking these four bolts off, which are right here, right here. They are E10 and they shouldn't be too tight. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm going to start pulling these out and start pulling the rail up and then I'm going to set it up to be able to test it. No luck. Oh. I take that back. Maybe some issues. Okay, I don't fully know exactly what just happened. All I know is when it got pressure after I primed it like two or three times, you saw the injector literally blew it right off. The metal clip was still on. The only difference is it's not bolted to the car. So, and if you look over here, it's got a crack. But I don't know if that's just from like the fall. Let's see if we can actually like, focus on that. See, I don't know if that's just from it falling, but the metal clip is even still on. So it could have been that this one was kind of clogged and it wasn't going properly and then putting too much pressure to another one. And another one was like leaking a little bit. Like maybe because when this happened is when I was at the, the track and basically that's where I leave the key in position too and I kind of just keep cycling it because I turn my pump on and off. So it might have been something like that, but I've never seen an ejector pop off like that and let's not clip down or seat it properly, but the metal clip is still on there. So needless to say, we have all new injectors, all new stuff. So whatever the issue may have been, hopefully let's fix it, but we're gonna keep trucking on. So we're gonna start flying through this pretty easily. So I'm gonna start by taking the supercharger belt off, start undoing the coolant lines for the intercooler, under this little brace right here, let all that water kind of like 
dump on the floor. It should be fine. And then my setup's a little different than a lot of other people because I don't have the secondary air pumps. I don't have, like, this little area of stuff. So mine's just going to be an Allen head right over there. And then, yeah, we made a little bit of a fuel mess. <laughs> it looks like it shot all over. And then we're going to start undoing the supercharger. And make sure you undo a lot of your lines, too. Like, if you can see, I already did this one over there. We got that over there. The throttle body's already off, so we're going to just keep swinging that stuff over. And make sure you undo your map sensor plug, which is down there, down there. Your air intake sensor, which is right here. And try to keep these plugs, remember, kind of where they're routed. And then we're going to do a time lapse and just keep whizzing through it. All right, now that we got all the bolts off and all the plugs and hoses disconnected, hopefully, I'm going to try to manhandle this and lift it off by doing it by myself, by hopping in the engine, pull it out, put on the radiator, and then keep going. So let's see how smooth this will go by just myself. Okay, I forgot something. So we got everything pulled out. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. So one thing I do recommend is try to swing everything out of the way. Like if you can see over here, I got my injector swung out of the way, the purge solenoid piping stuff, everything swung out of the way. Make sure you pull as many things out of the way as you can so you don't pinch any wires. One thing I didn't forget is the clutch. Okay, it's not even coming out. Alright. That's one thing that does suck about old cars. Sometimes these plugs get really stuck and they're really thickety. If no one's uh, messed with them in a while. So now that I got everything I think I got, I'm going to hop into the engine bay and try to manhandle it out. Whenever you do this, just watch where you put your feet. I'm still connected, but I think I can swing it out and deal with it out there. So what I what I forgot was the plug. That goes to this bypass valve. Hmm. Oh, poopy. There you go. Now I'm going to manhandle it and put it on the table. And there goes cool. Side note, this is not light. Oh, look, I'm finding some goodies down there. All right, now we got the supercharger off. We got it on the table. This thing's a lot more heavier than what I remember. And uh, the ones I've done recently are from my SLK32. Definitely a little bit more beefier and definitely heavier. I'm going to need a helper to put it back on. So one thing we're going to start ripping apart first is going to be the intercooler. There should be also T45s. It should be, you got four bolts. You got the four bolts right here. 
which 99% sure I'm going to have to remove these for the lines. And when I do it, I'm going to try to mark it so I don't forget. And then you got a, two bolts that are deep in there that are part of the snout, but they also do that bracket. So I'm going to start ripping those apart right now and separate this intercooler. Oh, a teeny little tidbit of info. So these four are different lengths than the two long ones. So the four short ones are from over here, in case you forget. And the two long ones are the ones that went through the snout and in the intercooler. So most likely, I'm going to have to pry this up because they put silicone on this. So we're going to start doing that. So we got it popped off. Uh, I do recommend putting a rag if you're going to start prying over here just to kind of like, so you're going to mess up the mating service. Um, this one had no gas gun on it, just uh, silicone. I did order a gasket because my SLK has one and in the book it says there should be one. So we'll debate if I put a gasket or silicone back on. But let's start examining it. So giving my intercooler a good once over, we got some silicone that was left in there from before. But it doesn't look too bad. Ah, can I even get a light in there? Hold on, let me get a flashlight. Doesn't look bad. And then going over the supercharger, this is where I really wanted to see. Because I know people were complaining, saying, oh, it makes all that noise. But hold on. You can't even hear anything. It moves, like, so freely. So, pretty nice. I don't see no big scoring or no weird debris, so we're just going to clean off and polish all this off before we put it in. I did break this plug. Now, if anyone would tell me if I even need to repin this or anything, this goes to the magnet because i got a fixed supercharger pulley, so I don't even think it matters anymore. But we're going to start pulling the snout off next, and then it could all be going to deep cleaning. All right, so we got the old snout off. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And then here we have, we're going to start putting the new stuff on. I did clean this off very little bit, just with some brake clean and a little bit of elbow grease. So it's not perfect, but I'm ready to start putting the uh, VRP stuff on. So it should be this one first. We're going to use a factory gasket on this. I couldn't see anywhere where people said to put silicone instead of it. And then we got the hardware that VRP supplies you with. These are 6 millimeter Allen heads. And remember, there are different sizes, just like when you started. So you got small and long. So we're going to start putting this part of the snout on and then go from there. So I just wanted to test really quick. So I put three of these bolts in on here. And I just want to see if I get the front half in without having the intercooler on or do I have to have it on with it. But how it looks right now, I'll never be able to get these top ones to tighten up. So we're going to pull the intercooler off. It's just mocked up right there. And it was a little wet anyways. I still got to let it dry. So we are going to leave these a little bit loose these ones right here and we're going to start working on this gasket i'm going to get my rtv out of my car and start putting the other part of the snout but just look at how cool like it does look like you get a lot more flow like these actually cover the bearings all under there and looks pretty good so vrp gives you this like rubber gasket that goes around there i also added a thin thin bead of the mercedes rtv onto there just because I didn't like how, like, right over here you had to snip it. So where I snipped mine was I made sure I did it on the top of the supercharger. So if I do start feeling like I have a vacuum leak or a boost leak or anything like that, I could smoke test it, and you'll see it pop out right over there. But I'm hoping it would all smush down, and I'm hoping no one else ever had an issue with this. So I'm going to throw mine on and keep going. Oh, these are the bolts that go to it. Be very careful you don't snap them. I would say maybe, like, 10 foot-pounds of even, probably go to 8. Just, just be safe. Do not use the impact gun. So I got that all mounted up, but as you can see inside, I didn't really put too much silicone. I don't know if you could actually see. None of it's really leaking out. You have a little bit red on the right side of it, but I see this bolt right here. I need to go get a special. I'm going to go get an Allen with a ball head on it from just Lowe's or something to tighten that one up, but it should be fine. I went and put the little part for the purge in there. So now I'm going to do the rest of the supercharger intercooler system, and then I can flip it over, and then I can start bolting up all four of these or six of these, whatever it would be. But it's looking pretty good so far. It's not that bad. Also, what I recommend is replace every gasket that you're down here because they're usually like five or six bucks. So I got a new one of the donuts. I will even focus on that. That's the part number for the donut. And then here's the part number for the actual throttle body gasket. Or it should be. Not the throttle body, but this little bypass gasket. So we're going to take all this off because even this seems rock solid. And I don't want to get a leak from there. Oh, I'm so glad I'm going to replace this because, like, look how mine's, like, rock hard. Like, literally just crumbled in my hand. So this one was pretty bad. Here's what a brand new one looks like. Ooh, so easy. This one literally, I might have been having a little bit of leak. That could have been part of some issue some down the road, but 
I'm so glad that now I'm here. This was maybe $6 or something like that at Mercedes. So I'm going to start replacing this one too. All right, so I got some dielectric grease on there. I went way too crazy with this silicone now that I'm looking at it. And I started pushing out my finger, so I'm going to scrape a lot of it away. Because I just don't want anything really to get into the rotor area. So I'm going to kind of scrape away the stuff on the edge over here and clean it up. And then we can start mating it together. All right, so we got everything tightened. One word of advice, this donut over here, put dielectric grease or some sort of lube. Because mine was a butthole to get in. But the benefit of the VRP setup is if you look straight down there, you could actually see if it's sealed all the way in. Because at one point, I couldn't get these bolts to line up. And then when I looked down here, I had so much more of just room I had to go. And then you could just wipe all that extra dielectric grease right off because you have so much access in this big old hole. One other thing I'm not the biggest fan of, if you look right here, maybe this is just my setup or I did something wrong. But it looks like it's almost smushing this wire right here, what I'm a little concerned about once I put my throttle body on. But we'll see what happens. I mean, factory, I don't think it really hit right here, but it is on this one. I also threw the new map sensor on that time. So we got the silicone there, the map sensor on there. Now we can flip it over and start working on the top side of this uh, throttle body setup. So, a few modifications. Just a little nipple it came with for the secondary air pump. Shut up, birds. What I went to the store for them, and I went and got a fitting that fit into here that is 3 8 line hosing. And I got a series of T's and hose, because what I'm going to do with this, because what I could not find anywhere, and these don't have the ports for it. Let's see if I can get over to the car. So for the whole, first of all, for the EVAP si system would be this piping. So my plan is I'm going to be cutting part of this hard line, get some normal like soft line, which is all over there. And that's going to go into one of the nipples. I don't know exactly which one yet, either this nipple barb fitting or this one. And then what the second one's going to be used for is for the PBC system. You had this whole comes over here to a T that then goes underneath the factory throttle body. So if you look on this throttle body, it has no port for it to go into. When the factory one right here has a port for that to go into. So my theory is I might have to go to the auto parts store, maybe get a couple other bends, but I'm hoping I can make... The EVAP system should literally just go straight shot in there. And then the one that's supposed to go under the throttle body right over here, I most likely could just cut it or basically manipulate it with a T. So I got this universal T right here, and then it will go into here. Should clear the hood, should be fine. I might have to actually go get a 90 just so it's not such a hard bend. But even like, look at this stuff, you could bend it up pretty good. And this is all fuel line, so it's brand new, pretty good grading. We're going to be using that. So right now we are waiting on a gasket for this, which was supposed to come today. It's not here yet. If it doesn't come by tomorrow, then I'm just going to go RTV on this, just like everyone else did. And then when my gasket gets here, then I'll put the gasket on. Because everyone does the RTV, but I actually found a company who makes gaskets for the Hellcats. That's for basically the same exact thing. So pretty happy, but everything's looking good. I still need to go back and get that tool. So I'm going to head to the auto parts store or most likely Lowe's or whatever and go get that ball tool right now. And then this is almost ready to go back on. Oh, also what I went and grabbed. So I've done this on my SLK. So you get the proper bolts and you cut the heads off. And then I'm going to show you a little dowel kit I use to drop this supercharger, supercharger on better. So a little update. I got the supercharger on all by myself. One thing that is a huge help. So basically way back when I took these bolts, cut the heads off of them. And they work as like little dowels to help guide you on. It does suck. I don't have the throttle body on yet because I'm still waiting for that one gasket. Um, I'm not going to bolt everything on because it's it's getting dark a little bit of the storm. And I'm waiting for one gasket. So I'm going to leave it how it is like this for right now. I mean, I'm going to finish the video and show you everything. But seems to be pretty, pretty sweet. So we got the gasket we were waiting for. This is supposed to fit a Hellcat throttle body. Order offline. Uh, I found it from the forums. Uh, I'll put a link below where I got it. It was like 25 bucks, and it's supposed to be thicker and able to hold on a little bit better is what they said. I don't really know if that's true. It was just easy for me to get. I got it here within like two or three days. The ship's pretty well. It came in a box. That's my biggest fear when I do gaskets and stuff like that. If they don't ship it in like a box, it gets bent. But this company, I think it was, what was it? Uh, MX Extreme. That's the people I order it from. Oh, what did they throw in here? A little catalog or whatever. Let's see if I can find the part number was, doesn't actually say a part number, but I'll look it up. I'll put a link and what they gave me a cool little sticker. There you go. Cool little sticker. 
So we got this all over there. We're probably going to throw it on the supercharger since it is a new day. We're either going to throw it on now or what I think I'm going to really do before I have to start bolting everything up, I'm going to start getting all the routing for all the airlines and all that stuff to make sure everything fits. All right, so for the EVAP system, we're getting rid of, we're going to test it, get rid of this hard line. And then we got some fuel line that I went and then just got this little basically adapter that goes from one to the other. It snugs on there really good. I think I'm going to put a couple um, little hose clamps on there too. And then that will flop, that slides right into that barb. And there's no bends, no nothing. I might wrap it around here just to keep it really far out of the way. And that eliminates that whole setup. And now this will work perfectly. I do want to put a couple hose clamps on there, but this is like, this is already pretty snug. You saw how hard that was to come out. It's the same on this. And those little pieces look like, I just went and got a kit at like O'Reilly's. You get a kit of like 10 of these, all different sizes. Okay, stop. So, now we're going to move on to the PVC system of it. All right, now the most rudimentary PVC setup is I got 3 8 fuel line that's looping like that. And then I got a T right here that is basically a little, just a 3 8 T that I'm going to put in, a in an area. I'm hoping like right here and then a loop right over. But I'm not going to cut that line and do this perfectly until I got everything else in place. But this definitely will work because these are also like 3 8 fits on there really good. And then this is the 3 8 barb fitting. Well, not barb, but like nipple fitting I got from O'Reilly's that will also work perfectly. And it threads right into there and it does not protrude up high at all. Like literally look like the transmission filler is higher than that. So hopefully everything will work and then this will eliminate tons of issues I might have. All right, so we got the supercharger in, and we got all the bolts and all that stuff that are holding in, the secondary air pump, that's all in, pretty straightforward. The throttle body, everything's plugged in. We do have a lot of extra line with this new throttle body set up. Not the biggest fan of how much extra, but we're gonna tuck it in somewhere, so that's not that big a deal. But now we're gonna start working on the injectors. So as you saw what happened with this injector, forget about that injector. We're now gonna start pulling all these out and put in the new 550 injectors. Well, new to me, 550 injectors. And then hopefully the harnesses and everything will bolt right up. So we're going to start knocking that out. To take these clips off, I already started, well, one kind of came off for me. Just take a little screwdriver and it should pop this metal clip right off. So I'm going to go grab one right now and I should show you. Good. All right, so you should be able to just get it right there. See how it wiggles right out? And sometimes they spring. And then just do that for each of them. And then these injectors should come out. As you see, I didn't have to even crack it from the line over there. So this is a very easy job. And normally there's pressure in the line, but you guys saw what happened over here. There's no more pressure now. All right, so we got all the injectors in. These are the 550 compared to the factory. And now I'm putting a little bit of dielectric grease on each of the O-rings that went into the rail and that go actually into the block. That way I don't roll it. So that's just a little something I do. I think other people put a different type of grease. I used to do dielectric grease because I had it here. And then there's still a little bit of fuel on the rail, so that kind of helped lubed it up a little bit. And we should be good. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the injectors all in on the rail. They're bolted up. So now we got to plug them in. So what we got to do now, I got these from VRP. They're supposed to be the adapter harnesses that plug in from the injectors to here. And let's see if they actually work. So far, oh, balls. Hold on. Uh, it goes this way. Oh yeah, so you heard that, that makes a really good click. Now we're just hoping they click on these injectors. All right, this one's gotta be wiggled a little bit. Yep, you hear that good click? So they're holding up pretty good. So we're just gonna start knocking them all. I'll put a link below of where I got these from VRP and all that stuff. And we're gonna start knocking all these out. Then we'll start working on the hose and the PVC system to be more permanent. All right, guys, so we got the surge tank. We got it all put back together. These are not bolted on. There's no gaskets, but I did it for testing right now. So if you look, this is what I do with my um, basic purge system. Not purge system, but you know what I mean. My PVC system. So you got right here, which comes off factory. I got to push it in more. And then it goes to this T that then goes to this nipple that I got. And then it goes back to over here. So you still have the same factory style. The only difference in factory is it goes, technically, it's right here. 
Mine is just like literally an inch forward and you still have it. And I didn't lose any of my ports. So if you still have like your secondary air pump, you can still put it there. And you still got one more port for nitrous or meth or whatever you want to do with it. So mine right now is a little bit rude. Like it's a little bit long, but I want to build my intake. I'm probably going to build it in the next video or two. So I don't want to fully keep cutting it in case I need more. So now we're going to rip these surge tanks off. We're going to push all this stuff in, get all the clips in. And then I don't know if I showed you the purge solenoid, because this is the purge solenoid going right here to follow this line. And if you could see down here, see so I just did the T right there, and that goes there. So we're going to pull these surge tanks off. I'll show you a better view of that. We're going to put the gaskets and bolt it up, and then we're almost done. All right, so we got the belt. We got everything's all tight and everything's bolted on. I do not have an intake yet just because I got to fish around and see exactly what I'm going to do with it. So right now, I uh, message, I 100% messed up. I should have sent VTech my file earlier, so I just sent him my file. So he probably won't get it back to me for maybe 24 hours just because it's already night. It's getting dark here, so he's probably sleeping now. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to fire it up in this video. But the next video, we're going to do fire it up. We're going to load up the tune, and we're going to take it out for a test drive. But as you saw, like, I think with my purge system and all that stuff, it makes it a lot cleaner. I definitely isn't going to trim this one up. But everything fits and everything's good. I am not so sure about this throttle body cable because if you look, there's a little piece right here. I'm pretty sure I could just do that. But for now, I just wanted to test it just to make sure everything works. I do have a little bit of extra. I'm going to get a lot of zip ties or zip tying it all up. But I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button. Throw a comment down. Tell me if you can notice it really quick. Maybe I did plug this in the wrong one. My only option was I might have flipped my throttle body, my bypass valve, because they're the same plug. Hopefully, I should notice that really quick when I go to hit the gas pedal and the bypass valve starts activating and not that one. So we'll see about that. Not that big of a deal, but see you guys later and hope you guys enjoy the video.